In the morning, the alarm clock rings, signaling the start of the day's activities and routines. Physics professor Jason Desson checks his son Charlie's homework and makes coffee for his beloved wife, Daniela. Daniela, who is in a hurry, thanks Jason for his thoughtfulness but insists that Charlie should not be allowed to drive. Despite this, Jason trusts his son with the car, and they nearly have an accident. Calmly, the father reassures his son and advises Charlie to express his feelings to the girl he likes. Meanwhile, Jason receives a phone call from his friend Ryan, who is excited to share some good news. Ryan has received a prestigious scientific award and invites Jason to celebrate that evening. After that, Jason heads to the university, where he tries to explain the essence of Schrodinger's thought experiment to his students. Jason draws a cat locked inside a box on the chalkboard, along with a vial of poison, a radioactive atom, and a Geiger counter. This experiment illustrates the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics, which states that until the box is opened, the atom is in a superposition state, undetermined. The lecture is interrupted by a phone call, and Jason notices his students leave without hearing that the cat is both alive and dead simultaneously. Later, Jason enters a dark room, notes the day's events in his journal, and injects himself with dark matter. The scene shifts to the family kitchen, where Jason and Daniela are preparing dinner. Charlie teases his parents about kissing frequently, then a message from Ryan, who has been waiting at the bar for a while, arrives. Daniela insists that her husband go meet his friend. Jason relents and goes to the bar. Ryan is pleased with his arrival and orders Jason's favorite drink, which the bartender says is the last bottle. Ryan introduces his colleagues to Jason and unexpectedly offers him a position at the new consciousness research laboratory. However, there's a catch, the neuropsychology center will be in San Francisco, and Jason is unsure if his family would want to move from Chicago. Jason promises to think about it and heads home. On a dark road, Jason is suddenly stopped by an armed, masked man. Jason is ready to hand over all his valuables, but the robber seems interested in something else. He puts Jason into a car, calls him by name, and orders him to comply. During the ride, the robber opens Jason's phone, knows his password, and asks questions about Ryan. Soon, they arrive at an isolated building, where the robber orders Jason to strip. Jason complies but decides to attack his assailant. However, Jason receives a hard blow to the head and soon feels a needle in his neck. The robber tells him to put on different clothes and warns that Jason is being given a new chance. Jason must remember this thought because now Jason will have everything he ever dreamed of, and all of this is done for their mutual benefit. When Jason asks who the robber is, he is told it's better not to know. Jason's consciousness fades. Jason regains consciousness in a hospital ward. He is examined and then sent to a bathroom. Eventually, Jason wakes up in an unfamiliar bedroom. He tries to leave, but the door is locked. Suddenly, a woman he doesn't recognize enters, acting as if she knows him well, and introduces herself as Amanda. Amanda tells Jason that his body is clean and he is no longer in quarantine. Jason doesn't understand what's happening, but no one answers his questions. The second person Jason sees is Leighton, who used to work with him. Leighton congratulates him on his success and calls him chief scientific officer. Then, the curtains open, and many colleagues applaud, welcoming back the one who returned. Jason had been missing for 14 months and 10 days, and they all want to hear about his journey. Confused, Jason starts talking about the meeting at the bar and the strange robber, but his patience runs out as Jason doesn't know the people around him and doesn't understand what's happening here. Leighton announces that Jason has to stay there overnight. However, Jason pushes him away and starts running. Jason manages to reach the exit, where a guard calls him by name and helps open the door. Jason escapes from the place, even though he is chased. He manages to get into a taxi, gives his home address, and heads home. However, upon entering, Jason finds his house unrecognizable. At the same time, in another reality, the Jason who just returned from the bar meets his upset wife, Daniela. Jason hugs her, tells her about Ryan's offer, and reminds her of his choice to marry her instead of staying in a cold lab. His wife melts and kisses him, unaware that this man is not her Jason. In another world, the first Jason meets Amanda at his home instead of his wife and son, who say they live there together. Jason couldn't believe it and started searching for traces of his son, but Charlie's room looked very different. It was now Jason's own office, filled with awards for extraordinary achievements and discoveries he had received over the years. Jason tried calling his wife, Daniela, but her number was unavailable. He wandered around the house, trying to understand what was really happening. Meanwhile, Amanda called, asking to handle the situation herself, but Jason saw a security car arrive at the house and fled. In another reality, Daniela led her husband to the bedroom and noticed a wound on his arm. 
However, Jason reassured her that she wouldn't believe the truth and kissed her. Meanwhile, Jason hurried to the bar where he had been the previous night, but the bartender refused to recognize him, even though the man called him by name and remembered his favorite drink. Jason insisted, but the bartender threw him out, advising him to check his head. Jason then went to the hospital, where he underwent a brain scan and was given a sedative. He constantly thought of Daniela and tried to find his wedding ring. At the same time, Jason also woke up next to Daniela, kissed his wife, and looked around the kitchen, searching for coffee. Simultaneously, the first Jason woke up and found a doctor in front of him, who informed him about the test results. It turned out that an unknown psychoactive substance was found in his blood, but according to all other indicators, his health was good. At his request, they tried to locate his family, but no one by that name was in Chicago. The doctors also reviewed his records. The woman listed his scientific achievements, which Jason himself didn't remember, and informed him that he had been missing for over a year and they wanted to know where he had been all this time. Jason then checked his information and found Daniela, but under her maiden name. In this world, Daniela continued to pursue her career as a painter, and her exhibition was supposed to open today. At this point, Amanda, Layton, and a security officer were discussing the situation. Amanda suggested calling the police, but Layton opposed the idea, and the security officer suggested checking the hospital. Meanwhile, at the hospital, Jason stole a white coat and walked out into the hallway, where he saw the familiar security officer. Jason managed to avoid the encounter and left the hospital. He then arrived at the university and apologized for being late, continuing his lecture. After that, Jason arrived at the exhibition hall. Hearing his name, he was allowed inside and examined the modern installations. Then, Jason saw a portrait of himself among the displayed paintings and found Daniela. He hugged her and tried to ask about Charlie, but she didn't know who Charlie was. Additionally, Daniela was constantly being congratulated and introduced Jason as the inspiration for her success. Ryan arrived, very surprised by Jason's sudden appearance. There were many rumors about his disappearance. Ryan was upset with Jason for many things he had done for him and his quick departure. Hearing the name of the company Jason recently escaped from, Jason started asking questions. However, then Daniela began a speech that included questions about unfulfilled dreams. Everyone asked if Jason could achieve his dreams and suggested he consider other choices he could have made. At the same time, in another world, Jason listened to Daniela's work plans and gave advice to his son, which surprised his wife. Meanwhile, Jason, Ryan, and Daniela from the New World discussed their plans. Jason suddenly proposed a hypothesis about a scientist who married the woman of his dreams, went to a bar and met an old friend who received a prestigious award. However, on the way home, Jason was attacked, and when he woke up, everything around him had changed. Brain scans showed no abnormalities, only an unknown substance was found in his body. For a practical joke, it was too complicated, and Jason was not going crazy. Jason was asked to explain how he inspired Daniela's creativity, and he reminded her that once he told her that theoretically, people could exist in millions of parallel realities. His decision to part with her was the biggest mistake in this world. Then Jason talked about several secret projects and warned that they would not meet again. Jason began describing their life together with their child, which caused anger in Ryan and tears in Daniela. Ryan described his friend's achievements in his own world before leaving. At the same time, Jason mixed up his toothbrush, which confused his wife. Jason was then allowed to spend the night in Daniela's guest room. Looking around, Jason found a rubber band that he wrapped around his ring finger, imitating a wedding ring. Meanwhile, the other Jason puzzled his wife with unusual tenderness and examined the photos on the walls of the house. After that, Jason called Ryan and declined his offer to work in San Francisco. At this point, the first Jason called Amanda and said he was going to a mental hospital. The woman went there, but it turned out to be a trick Jason used to lure her out of the house. Now, Jason and Daniela inspected the house together. Jason pointed to a photo, but in his world, it depicted them as a family. Jason talked about a boy who was as talented as his mother, and Daniela admitted that after she left him, she got rid of the child. Jason couldn't believe this because everything was different, but Daniela insisted that in her world, that was what happened. They couldn't understand why their memories were so different, but the woman began to believe his story. Then, Jason found notes from his counterpart in this world and realized that Jason made a major discovery in quantum physics. The second Jason created a larger version of a container in which someone could be placed into superposition and gain the ability to move between different realities. It turned out that his counterpart, the second Jason, moved to his world and sent the first Jason to this dimension.
So, Jason was one person living in reality until the question of marrying Daniela came up. When the first Jason showed his family, the second Jason left Daniela. Their universes split, and the second Jason dedicated himself to science and discovered the container. They switched worlds, but why? Then, Daniela admitted that she was glad Jason showed up and explained the rubber band on his finger as a desire to preserve the marriage and return to his wife. Jason talked about their life in the other reality and confessed that they were happy. Daniela kissed him, but at that moment, someone knocked on the door. They went to open it, and a security officer from the company Jason had escaped from entered the house. Jason asked her not to use the weapon, but the woman shot Daniela. The last thing Jason saw was her blood-covered face.